squeaky. Be squeaky. You wanna? Okay, we'll talk about start day one. What it is? Get rid of that. Okay. Get rid of this. Let me get rid of that. Already. No. Hey, how's it going? We're live already. I don't even know. I'm like. <laughs> oh, like... So. So anyway, hi. Welcome to uh, Thinking Out Loud Live with Tina Spinelli today, or Tina actually Tina O'Connell. <laughs> well, um, so just to let everyone know what we're doing, uh, this is Thinking Out Loud Live, where we discuss our thoughts on different things, but mostly about mental health and entrepreneurship. Uh, this was made possible by Start Day One, our nonprofit for um, mental health and suicide prevention. So one of the things that we do differently with suicide prevention is that we have a more proactive approach in helping people where we try to reach out instead of reacting and waiting for mental health issues or suicidal tendencies. Uh, from our experience, it's just been more effective when you actually do it proactively. In fact, any type of prevention requires a proactive effort. So today, uh, you want to introduce our guest? Well, I'm going to introduce our guest. Let me find all her information here. Where did it go? Let me, here's all my information about, I'm going to introduce you to my friend. She's one of my bestest friends in the whole wide world. Her name is Tina O'Connell and she is brilliant. She is beautiful. She's kind hearted and she's a rock star. This woman has two master's degrees. That's right. She's got double master's degrees, one in art and one in, yeah, <laughs> and one in uh, clinical, like clinical mental health and school counseling. Um, and this woman did this while she was pregnant and after she just gave birth and had a newborn and while working full time as a teacher. So she's got a lot so of, she's insight. got a strong mindset. She's got, she's got a lot of things <laughs> going on for her. Um, she's got a, she's got a great track record. So anyway, let me bring into the show my bestie, Tina. Hi! Hi! Hey, How is it niceness? <laughs> <laughs> I like it here. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, you know, we did a quick intro, but, you know, a lot of listeners or watch people watching don't really know about you. So I, I like when people hear straight from you. So yeah. just tell people kind of a little background, you know, we'll give you some time for that. So okay. give me a background, where you're coming from. Okay. Uh, what you're doing today and what you're hoping to do and like why you went into you know the mental health and why you want to be a counselor and yeah exactly. why you think what you're doing is the whole thing. Over past present future i can do that Go. i can't promise i'll stay so linear though because i'm not <laughs> a linear person um you know kind of starts a long time ago you know i think most of us um were introduced when we're really young to being artists right you know when we're kids we naturally just love art and it was something i've always done um my high school art teacher is the reason i ended up becoming a teacher um and and to do that i knew i wanted to pursue art and i do work as a professional airbrush artist as well uh, and i've been very lucky in that aspect but Teaching was always a passion for me because of my teachers. Um, I come from kind of a traumatic background. So my teachers were my, you know, my safety net. My school and my classroom were such a big part of my growth. So, um, you know, always felt very natural. So my first, my bachelor's was in um, art. It was studio painting and art education from Stockton University. Um, go Ospreys. And, um, you know, for the next 10 years after that, I actually worked mainly as a um, an airbrusher and a bartender and bartenders, teachers and therapists all kind of come along the same thing. I always joke <laughs> that uh, trying to tell people that are struggling with something, uh, you know, something they need to change in a positive way that they're not going to hate you the next day. Right. <laughs> that's what teaching is that's what bartending is. Um, and, you know, so I got to kind of play therapist for years as, as a bartender. You meet a lot of people from a lot of different places. And at this time I had not dealt with my own things. I didn't recognize that though, cause we're young, you know, the, the youth is wasted on the young. And so um, round 30, I started teaching full time. And uh, at that same time, I started seeing my own counselor. Um, at this point, I had just graduated with my first master's uh, from NYU, and that was in studio painting. I did it overseas in Venice, Italy. Um, and what was amazing about that is I went somewhere where no one knew me. And right. it was really important for me, for my own growth, to leave everything I knew. 
Um, as I was there, I very much grew as an artist. Um, I very much, you know, really lived that lifestyle alone and did a lot of self-reflection um, and came out of that knowing I wanted to teach because yet again, I had phenomenal teachers during this big growth period of my life. So fast forward, you know, as a high school art teacher, it is by all means my passion. I love my kids so much. Um, but what I saw through the years and as I was now working with my own counselor, um, I saw the difference about how they open up, you know, in an art class. Even a kid who, you know, is like, I hate art. I can only draw stick figures. We've heard it. You know, we, we're prepared for that every year. Um but what was amazing is the relationships, most important part of, um, you know, having a counselor and something everyone should know. I know I'm going to sidetrack here, but if you meet a counselor and they're not a right fit for you, that's OK. They're not offended. Find the counselor that fits for you. I was very lucky. And um, another teacher had turned me on to my counselor who I've seen now for, I think, like eight years. He's a great tool in my tool belt of life for when I'm having a tough time or if I need to just bounce something off, um, they, they become a comrade. But that therapeutic alliance is everything. So I didn't know it, but I was already doing that with my kids, with my students. And, you know, so you have everything from like the kid you expect to be an artist to um, your jocks, uh, to your shy kids, to kids with special needs. And all of them want to be heard, right? That's what we want our whole life is someone to care about our story and about who we are. Mm -hmm. And the great part about an art room is that we get all of that. You, you're going to get your math and everything and learning how to draw and proportion and, and whatnot. But what they don't realize is as they're opening up, they're also learning a lot of life lessons, right? We've got social emotional skills. We've got um, everything from you know, it may not be their career, but they're going to take something moving forward. So in my years as a teacher, I often, you know, had to bring kids and down to the guidance office more than once. I've unfortunately had to bring someone for a suicidal ideation. And the last time I brought one down and I had to leave because at that point I was not a counselor. I was heartbroken. Like, how could I take these children that I love so much? And I knew that we have phenomenal counselors at my school and that they would be taken care of. But especially now as a mom, it's even harder. I can't help but want to take them that extra step, you know. So that and dealing with my own mental health and the strength and the things that I found through the years working with my own counselor really inspired me um, to kind of, you know, handle my past look at mental health on an everyday basis and then how much I naturally had gravitated towards the arts as something because creativity is is hand in hand with this, especially with mental health. So for myself, I realized years ago and I didn't recognize it until maybe two years ago that a counselor that worked with myself and my sister when we were younger was an art therapist and the light bulb went off. So I pondered this and I talked to the counselors at school and I said, I was like, you know, in the art room, like I'm definitely the mush. I'm the mom, you know, I'm like, what's mm -hmm. going on? And I realized how I love teaching and I, and I, that will never change. I love the arts. I like creating it, but how it was like synergistic. I don't know if that's the specific word, but how it really worked together with mental health awareness, mindfulness, um, and how it opened people. So Fast forward, talking to my own counselor, started this idea of going to uh, school to be a therapist. And I'm like, wow, more loans. Well, you know what? It was worth every penny. Um, I am not fully finished yet, just to clarify. Uh, so I am conferred at the end of the year. And when you first finish your degree, and mine's a dual, so I'm both able to do clinical mental health counseling as well as school counseling. Um, nice transition, if you would, but I would love to be able to continue to do both. Um, and as I started that program, it's amazing, you know, let alone that it's great, you know, therapy for yourself, you're in a room full of other therapists, <laughs> um, but it really helped me, uh, you know, talking to the counselor and him saying, this is, this is great. He was very supportive, which is what you want. Again, going back to leave your counselor. If you don't have that relationship, I have a very easy, comfortable relationship with my counselor, um, that allows me to speak very freely and who, as who I am. So fast forward, I did. I went to school. I went back to Kane University. Um, and so I finished the majority of my, my coursework. But because I did the dual degree, I have an extra internship, which I'll complete this fall. I did pass the um, NCE, which is our National Licensure Board. So um, I am on my way there. But when we first start, I will be what's called an LAC, a licensed associate counselor. And for I think it's 3,800 more hours um, or so, I will work underneath other supervising counselors. 
And at the end of that, then you are an LPC, a licensed professional counselor, and I could work out of anywhere. I don't have to specifically have a supervisor. So that's credentials. Um, so where do you go with it? What I found now since then is everything I learned at school, like in meaning me going to school at uh, for to be a therapist mm -hmm. has been useful in my classroom. There's not a time that I can't say that they don't cross paths because how can I ask kids to be creative, which is a very personal thing in a room without making it a, a trusted experience? You know, uh, we know that anybody that especially going through, you know, we know adolescence is a big time of change. We know that, um, you know, as you transition into adulthood, more changes come. Um, so watching them open in the art room made me really want to move forward. So though I am not specifically licensed, but there is an art therapist degree. Uh, not all states can actually build like for insurance purposes um, can take on an art therapist, but they can always take on an LPC. So um, I will use my modality, which I'm intending to specialize in art therapy, obviously bridging that gap between both my art side of my life and the therapeutic side of my life. Short and sweet enough? Short and sweet enough. I <laughs> oh, you did it. nothing with your life. Got it. Got I'm it. Used <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, as you know, what we're doing is start day one. Everything that we do for mental health and suicide prevention it's always all about being proactive, right? Everyone is just so reactive and always waiting for mental health issues. And what I like about the the whole creative expression, you know, like what we've learned with uh, was it um, Lisa Rankin? I'm not sure, but pretty much yes. almost That's everyone kind of says because. So one of the biggest things that even affect us physically is this our stress response, right? Oh yes. Yeah. So our stress cortisol. response is huge. Yeah, the cortisol, cortisol. really messes you yeah. up. And people don't realize, you know, like people have told me like, um, you know, with mental health and stuff, they always say like, well, you know, people have chemical imbalance. Yeah. But the question is, how, is that before or after your mm -hmm. mindset? You know, because when you think of the worst things ever, and if you think like, oh my God, I can't pay my bills tomorrow. Guess what? It thinks that there's a tiger behind you and your brain goes tiger, cortisol, boom. And so when does the chemical imbalance happen? It's not before and then you become depressed. It's mm -hmm. you're depressed. That's why you get depression. So we and it's almost cyclical that. if you think about it, because now yeah. that you're depressed, you're feeling more stress and it can continue. Right. Um, and a lot of things are like that. Same thing with just physical, right? Mm -hmm. When you're oh. depressed, you eat more. When you eat more, you get more depressed and then it just mm -hmm. keeps on. And you actually raise your cortisol because that's where all your weight goes to in your stomach. Yeah. So that's why a lot of people don't realize uh, when doctors are talking to them about losing belly fat, that's actually where your cortisol sits. So you're mm -hmm. holding on to stress hormones basically all the time. Yeah, um, yeah right. And with art therapy specifically, um, and, and I'll give a, a very easy to um, understand example for everyone of what art therapy and how it works because um, overall where, where I specifically want to start an expressive arts therapy nonprofit in the future, expressive arts covers a whole bunch of modalities. It can be music therapy, it can be art therapy, um, their uh, drama therapy. So what's it could be talking about any kind of any kind of expressive, mm -hmm. expressive. Yeah, any, anything like right. that. And then and right. then you can even bring in things like play therapy and sand tray. And, and it's just that what we've learned through years, you know, because everybody thinks about, you know, therapy and they're like, oh, it's got to be Freud. Right. You know, you're sitting on a couch. And yeah, right. that's what everyone right. dreams. And I'm going to sit right. behind you and judge you and then say, that's interesting. The real truth of therapy, you know, for myself anyway, because obviously there's people that still believe in that modality, but mm -hmm. today's therapists tend to be eclectic. So we don't use just one. We're not just CBT. We're not just, you know, um, cognitive behavioral, that's cognitive behavioral therapy. We tend to mix and match. So that's what's nice about being having the LPC and then being able to get different certificates and um, take classes and do further study to specialize, just like anything else. Right. For myself, I really obviously saw the benefit of art therapy. So where I want them all to be available, I think it's really important. And that th in this day and age, and just, I'm gonna use art therapy to explain how the expressive arts kind of work for everybody. But people like big examples, right? Everybody understands and we think about um, our amazing vets, thank you for your service, vets and PTSD, right? Large parts of that, there's there, it's kind of a twofold thing. We think about first that the shame of it, 
right? That they feel bad for wanting to express themselves that, that, you know, they're supposed to be strong, right? They're the, they're men, they're brothers. They, that's what they go for. Well, a lot of times our therapy is done in a group setting because they need to see universality. You know, we all feel this way. We all go through stress. Sometimes we all go feel sad. Sometimes right now we're in the middle of a pandemic ever, (laughs) right? Let, let's talk about right. mental health and pandemic. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> um, but with what had happened was I read this amazing study that I ended up basing a paper on. And with a vet, we know PTSD is very common, post-traumatic stress disorder. And some of the things that people kind of remember is that like if um, let's say fireworks go off, they think of their friends like getting really upset, right? Uh, because it reminds them of, of gunfire or, you know, just any kind of uh, insurgents coming. Their physical reaction is real. That is what post-traumatic stress is. It brings them, their heart rate's going to go up again. They're going to start to feel that panic sensation again as if they're in the situation. So our brains basically kind of need to be retrained from that. Mm-hmm. And the other part of that is that often they, and it can, you can learn how to deal with it. That's what therapy is. Therapy is about figuring it. We're not there to give you the answer. We're there to help you find the answer and to find the coping mechanisms. And the yeah, I was going to say, like, for people that are watching, like, therapy, any kind of therapy, it's all internal because all you're doing as a therapist mm-hmm. is really guiding you. Because we are absolutely curing out yourself. of them and guiding them. No, yeah. no, if I just give you the answer, I could just yeah. be your mom. You know, exactly. <laughs> right, right. You know, so you it really has everything. All your problems comes from you. Even the PTSD that you mentioned, and any kind of mental health issue, no one is doing that to you. Like yeah. absolutely no one. You have to understand well, you that you have to be accountable. Someone, but you know, okay. right, it, it might have been caused by an external surface. Right, but right, right. But I, that's already that's the whole cortisol thing, right? Back yeah. in, as a an animal, right? The, mm-hmm. You're already safe, so the okay. cortisol shouldn't be pumping anymore. But mm-hmm. because as humans, we think of the future thinking, and all oh, yeah. of the cortisol is still pumping like crazy. But mm-hmm. people have to understand you have to be more accountable and realize like you're the one causing the pain. And that you are also the cure for the pain. So yeah, when you, that, you know, learning about your own body and that that's a large part of this as well. And where yeah. you're hearing in schools more, we're coming up with social, you know, and it's kind of nice. So you'll hear me go back and forth between being a teacher and being a therapist sometimes yeah. here, but that, that need for social emotional awareness, you know, we have all, generations of men that weren't comfortable to talk about how they were feeling, which in the end, that repression came out in this way or women feel, you know, like there, because it just wasn't normal to talk about it. Or we still yeah. have, you know, different cultures still aren't comfortable with that. And we, right. we very much learn how to be multicultural counselors because I have to approach someone in one, you know, culture differently than another. Some don't yeah, like eye contact and some, um, you know, yeah. will not respond to you much because of, you know, out of a respect or if you're too fast at them. So you have to be mindful of who you're working with and when. Yeah. But getting people to be present is how they learn to control their bodies, right? So going back to that that um, explanation with the um, the vets, if I were to work with a vet, one, one of the main things that they can do. So when you have cortisol, you think about um, so the left side, you know, if you're right handed, your left side of the body so far and left side, right hand. Right. Yep. And this left side of your brain Logic. is very much verbal, mathematic, you yeah. know, uh, very the logic thinking. Right. Total logic. Right, right. side is supposed to be creativity and such. Right. Well, yeah. one of the things that cortisol does is it actually diminishes your ability to vocalize because you, how are you, because that's literally what it attacks. It attacks that left side of your brain and takes away that almost speech component. So that's why oftentimes- so mostly affects, talk about it. Cortisol mostly affects the uh, the left brain? I think it can, it can affect, and I'm, believe me, I'm not a doctor and I didn't have to- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, but cortisol is known to diminish the, um, the workings of the left side of the brain, gotcha. making it, uh, and I don't remember that I did that paper a little bit ago, so I don't remember the exact. So I don't want to. I don't want to be wrong on that. That's but so what happens? Thing, yeah, and you don't realize this phys- So this physical response. So you know, bang bang, making me go back into you know some kind of fear, or terror feeling. My cortisol is going to go up. My ability to vocalize is going to go up and down. Mm-hmm. So what an art therapist does is, and whether this is individual or with a group, like I said, depending upon the situation, we often work in groups because universality, letting other people know that you're not alone is a really amazing task, as well as teaching social skills, uh, learning coping mechanisms. But so you can have someone with a drawing, right? 
we maybe they don't feel comfortable discussing what exactly happened. Well, sometimes people are more comfortable to draw and you do not have to, that's the one thing, you don't have to be able to paint a portrait to go to an art therapist. It could be stick figures, you could use stickers, you could use collage. They will work with whatever you know level someone wants. If someone wanted to paint a portrait, excellent, yeah. okay. But basically you're asking, you know, whatever you want out of that you know, situation, you're kind of asking them to draw a picture of it. And the kind of interesting thing is so maybe they can't talk about insurgents, but they can draw dragons and right. they can make themselves a superhero and they can, you know, the snakes on the ground are bullets instead. So usually it's some kind of symbolism, you know, that that they're putting down on the paper. And, and say through the process, it might be a couple days um, or over one session, they draw this picture, but it not only are you hoping, and each day you'll now have a new picture, right? So you're kind of helping them get move along their story. Right. Eventually by relaxing the body through using art therapy, it starts to open up that verbal side again. And, you know, we start with just descriptions of the pictures, you know, like, mm -hmm. what do you see here? Tell me about it. And we, you know how we are as humans. I've already gone three different tangents since we started. <laughs> so, and that's not even as many are in my brain. And that's so, why I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think about it, you know, that ability to, to help them kind of talk. But the other awesome part of that is not only bringing back that verbalization, but that if at any time it becomes too much, they have power. Put it in a draw. Yeah. Rip it up, put yeah. it away. It's about regaining power over yourself in this situation, yeah. this specific Makes use sense. of art therapy, because there's a lot yeah. of them. So, you know, we don't realize how, you know, and that's just such a concrete kind of example, you know, as, you know, as the system then relaxes and we can start to have better conversations and it'll open up your further sessions, right? Right. But that's just one way of using it. You know, it, we think about people in everyday lives, right? When you're stressed in a t on a test and they give you scratch paper, what are you going to do? You're, you're going to doodle, right? It's a natural relaxant, you know? Yeah. Um, all these people going to paint parties now, which I love, you know, yeah. like, why are they trying to do it? They're trying to de-stress. Mm -hmm. So it's such a natural way. And then for some people, it will be music. For other people, it could be drama therapy and, you know, being able to, take the place or the role of, of your aggressor that you're trying to learn how to speak to, you know, there, there's so many fascinating directions we can use this and yeah. alone just the, the, you know, if you switch back to just art and to art itself, the creation of it is something that is peaceful. You know, it's the yeah. only time we ever shut up. Yeah. <laughs> there's you know it's I mean? funny. We actually have this one guest that we're going to have soon. And basically it's, it kind of goes back to the same thing, right? Using the right brain and left brain or whatever. Mm -hmm. But their method is like, is using your non-dominant hand. And usually yeah. most people are right-handed. So like using your left hand actually starts to use your right brain and mm -hmm. actually helps. And with the whole, I guess, relaxation response and really when just- When I teach people to do portraits, something, you know? I have them turn them upside down. Your first portrait, you know, one of the first things you do is actually draw a portrait upside down because you see the shapes instead of because it is, it's breaking apart that logical side yeah. to go with what you see, you know, like it's literally like, ah. this is your idea of it, right? <laughs> Drawing up, teaching, oh my God, I, it, you can have a cube, something as simple as a cube, you know, and depending upon where you have it in the screen, let's see, do I have a cube here? I do have a cube. Okay. So, you know, if it's up here, you don't see the top. If it's right. here, you see part of the top. If it was really low, you'd see the whole thing, right? Yeah. So it's, people are naturally going to make the box as big as the side on top, because that's what they think of a cube, but proportion and perspective, right? I love, I, I use, I teach perspective in drawing and perspective on life. I say it all the time at right. school. Mm -hmm. It's definitely think I'm a nerd, which is fine. Yeah. Um, if they didn't, I'd be confused. Um, but, <laughs> but it's such a valuable thing to realize if we shift our perspective, right? Yeah, that's so big. It's that's a shift in perspective. And not everybody, I, I am definitely, I mean, you are my amazing, wonderful friends in real life. You don't just know me this way. You know that I can be on some days a very together human and other days I'm, <laughs> you know, ADD crazy and, and live my anxiety <laughs> life. Um, I'm a very, you know, I'm never someone, I believe it's really important to talk about that. Like I'm an anxious human by nature. So I'm a preparer. I clean because I'm nervous. I do all these things for those reasons and they're coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's me too. That's like you're creative. Like I, I clean like right. all the time I clean and he's like, oh, she's 
having her therapy. He mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like, hey, your whole house will be spotless. My whole house is spotless. Yeah. If I'm stressed out, the house is spotless. There's a yeah. awesome, there's like a gourmet five course meal cooked. Right. Yeah. It's just you can be more in those moments somehow than any other. <laughs> I think sometimes I give her a stress on purpose. Like oh, I had a feeling. I said, let me come over and freak you out. Feel free to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> just think about like that that piece you feel, and even if you're not someone who does art itself, you know, like musicians are really natural towards that. But okay, paint. I don't know if anybody's ever like, you know, remember when you were a kid and you didn't care about being messy, the feel of the paint was the best part, right? You know, their hands are all in it. Their hands are all over you. It's everywhere. Right. When I, as a painter, I find my calm when I get my paint, the exact, uh, it's called viscosity, the, the flow of paint, you know, where it, doesn't dry out on my stroke and make it funny at the end, right? It's finding that comfort level. It's a physical version of a mental feeling, you know, like, and that's what we're always trying to do. We're trying to yeah. find peace and balance in our lives. And it is so important, especially now when we're all going through a traumatic experience, all of yeah. everyone we know is going through a traumatic experience yeah. right now right. to find something that gives you peace. For me, yeah. art is that. For others, right. it's music. Right. Exactly. Art, sculpting, cleaning, almost anything could be an art form depending upon how you attack it, you know? <laughs> but um, I just really want people to, to, you know, we're using our phones constantly, right? Right now, I, I think I'm going, I'm ready to bed. Let me check it one more time. Mm -hmm. And I realized my stress level is I'm, and they call it doom scrolling. I think I read the other day was the term yeah. doom scrolling because you're just trying to make sure you didn't miss the last thing, right? So you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. Well, now we all know as you're trying to go to sleep and the lights are going at you like this, you totally enacted your brain. You are, there's no sleep coming. Yeah. So what should we be doing at the end of our days to relax? Doing right. the things that we're passionate about. Creative, creativity of all is one of the best. And even reading a book, you're taking on someone else's creativity, right? And it's helping you become a part of the story and remind you, you know, we forget as adults. One of my favorite things as a teacher, uh, first day, I asked them to draw an elephant. You tell a kindergartner to draw an elephant, they're like, yes, got this, <laughs> elephant, right? right? You tell a teenager or an adult, they're going to like agonize over it. You know, like they're going to yeah. say, it doesn't really look like it. Who's going to see it on Facebook? You know, like who's going to yeah. Instagram? Sorry, the kids that I like yeah. Instagram. Um, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm learning. Um, <laughs> I still have MySpace. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have MySpace. Anymore. I um, but <laughs> I saw your post yesterday. <laughs> that means you want MySpace. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, yeah. how did you see it? Um, but so <laughs> what I love about it, so my favorite thing is then I go up to the board and I'm like, you've all been so in your head, you forgot how to enjoy creativity and yeah. use it as a tool in your toolbox. Right. I go up, I'll use an oval for the head. I'll use a figure eight to make the ears and S for the nose. Then I'll show them how to quick make it. I'm like, does it look like an elephant? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, did I look stressed? No. <laughs> You're not supposed to stress that side. And But it is a muscle we have to practice with. It will yeah. atrophy like anything else. Right. Creativity yeah. atrophies. Who yeah. knew, you know? Definitely. And whatever you can do in this day and age with all of this stuff going on to bring yourself peace, most of us naturally have gone to that. Gardening. Mm -hmm. landscapes exactly. fixing their houses it's all yep. you right. know it seems like it on the surface it's very you know um just a veil right but the thing is is for a lot of us these are things that have been bothering us and yep. now when we make our our surroundings peaceful we feel more right. peaceful when mm -hmm. we finish more things and then get to create more because now that your space is clear you know that's why people find it confusing because i'm an ocd cleaner but i'm a painter only time I can throw things everywhere. I got paint everywhere. It's in my hair. You didn't paint or anything. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have a crazy ass bitch, right? <laughs> and I still think that, which is fine. Um, <laughs> I'm passionate. I like to say I terrify with enthusiasm. Yeah. Um, nice. I love that. Uh, I said that at my first teaching interview. They're like, what? I was like, they're like, give you a negative. I'm like, well, it's kind of a both. I terrify with enthusiasm. I believe passion for life. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> they're like, shouldn't have hired that one. Right. <laughs> no, that was the patient. <laughs> um, but but that it, it's just been crazy, a crazy ride to not only see it in my own life and the growth that when I accepted myself as an artist. You won't hear me often call myself an artist. You'll hear me say I'm an airbrusher and not that they're not an artist, you know? 
Um, and I do all kinds of things. Like I said, crafting, people are crafting now. Think Pinterest is the best. Uh, the fails are even better. That's teaching people how to deal with, you know, failure. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's how you handle it, right? Yeah. As That's long as not like just a, yeah, it's such right. an integral, small yeah. little part, but we're forgetting that. And we need right. instant gratification. Scroll, right. scroll, 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 scroll. Right. We need um validation, which you really don't. Your validation should be from your people. From yourself. You know? from, within. from within. I was super like thoughtful about this before we got on. And I was like, oh, you know, super nervous. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm talking to two of my favorite human beings from <laughs> about something I'm passionate about. Yeah. And, and, and again, another life lesson, teacher to therapist, if you don't, teacher and therapist goes across, yeah. if you don't know, do the research, right? Yeah. I, I first thought I have it. What if I don't know how to do, you know, Chirisciuro to teach in my drawing class? Okay, I'm going to research it. Thank you for the internet. Um, so much easier than, could you imagine having to go to Dewey Decimal System for everything we looked up today? <laughs> Do, no. At least we know what that is. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we know how to use it. <laughs> it Everyone would be so dumb because of COVID. We're like, I don't have a, Oh, I miss I the smell what, of the, know how to, the stacks. Yeah. Of, do you remember how the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. smelled? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you know what it's called? Do you even know what it's called? The smell? No. Oh, no, no. I'm talking about that. <laughs> oh, what? The Dewey Decimal System? Yeah. The, the, car, the card index? The um. Yeah, yeah. I'll okay. get it later. Like, a, a uh, there is a name for it. Yeah, there's it's a name in for the it. something. It's the index. Card catalog. Card catalog. Oh, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I made today. <laughs> <laughs> so people that are watching, so the whole idea, right? Every time when we talk about start day one and stuff, we're trying to change, ch hopefully change your perspective because the only way for you, the only reason we're trying to change your perspective because it helps you kind of, you have your own sense of purpose. But if your perspective is not in line with it, you'll never make that decision. Mm -hmm. And so everything that Tina is talking about with art and expressing yourself and all that stuff, this is all going to be useless and meaningless unless you actually make a decision. So we're curious if anyone has any questions, like what's stopping you from starting doing something creative, whether it's music, mm -hmm. cooking and things like that. It's like because these are proactive efforts. So that's what I like mm -hmm. about this, Tina, because it's not something like, don't wait until you're mentally stressed out. Like, shit, I got to paint. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, stressing the fuck out. Yeah, like, in that moment. <laughs> you know, like, you don't do that. So what you, we what we want you to do is already think about like, hey, you know what? It's actually healthy because it, it's a mental exercise. Just like you said earlier. Yeah. It's How so good for you. Know? Like, yeah. So it's it, it kind of exercises your right brain, the creative part of you. Because, you know, we're always left braining it, right? Mm -hmm. Always like minus plus, minus plus. What's the going on? The details of your day are constant, but exactly. we all know our mind keeps coming in, right? You know, yeah. like at the same time where you're like, I'm getting this done, this done. Your brain's going, oh, crap, I got to yeah. do this and this. And we forget to. And so that brings me back to mindfulness, which is a really, really important thing that I'm struggling with right now. Very much so. Right. So we have all these people who their time is off. I, I have no clue which day of the week it is right now. And then I'm in a panic when it comes up. And if I remembered to be present, if I could quiet the chatter, I would be more present. Right. We forget to just one of the things that that sidetracks me now and will stop me when I need it. And I'm very grateful is my son's laugh. You guys know Sean. That giggle yeah. is. I love him. Light. <laughs> and he is the first person. And, and my husband's amazing. You know Brian. He's super calm. I'm yeah. definitely yeah. warm. He's the calm. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> that poor man. Um, <laughs> but and Brian's very good at bringing me into reality. But you're mad because it's an adult, right? You know, like don't tell me I need to calm down right now. Right. <laughs> but he's trying to ground me. And grounding is another thing we talk about. Grounding is, it are different things yeah. um, like find five red things Major in the room. Oh, okay. put your, put, take your shoes off and feel the ground. What does it right. feel like? Trying right. to get you into your body so that you can actually have a good response. So that you can have a healthy um, time trying to use your coping mechanisms instead of just an initial response. Because we all know, like, if I go, if you go off of that initial response, what you find out when you get all the information later it might be totally different. So I find that becoming mindful, lowering that stress in your body, lowering, yeah. um, you know, our, our external activity to remember to breathe. That could be just simple. You don't have to even, yeah. it. it could be. 
Yeah. Yeah. Take calm your body down. Yeah. Calm you down. Art is just a way and doodling is a way that we do it and we don't think about it and think it's like, oh, that, you know, that hippie thing that we're all talking yeah. about. You know, like people appreciate art and the creation of it. And even if they're, I, I, I had the best professor, she was 83 years old um, when I first moved to Italy for school. And I originally went back to doing oil portraits, which I was good at, but I didn't enjoy. And I had started airbrushing in between, which was real fast, right? So my personality had kind of shifted with this dynamic of my media. My media changed and I was changing with it. So now I was overseas and I only had my oil stuff with me. And I was trying to find what did I want to say? You know, like that's always a, a challenging thing as a person, let alone an artist, you know, and that's why I'm so thankful for things that are crafty that help you just kind of get back into your artist mentality and find more inspiration and maybe make a piece that matters more for you. Um, but this woman came in and, and uh, Angela Churchill, she was a dinosaur. She's still, she's still alive today. Uh, she was basically, you know, already had so much trouble seeing them, but for 36 years, she had this program in Venice and, you know, she sat with me and she says, what's going on? I said, I didn't realize I had changed so much in a short period of time, not only in my own personal yeah. work, but my own personal life view. I'm now living in Europe. Yeah. Everything slowed down. On my lunch break, I can't go do the 30 million things I need to do. And then after school, yeah. you know, so it forced me to calm this down. Relax. Which, yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I remember my mother being very almost confused by me when she came home because I was so kind of calm. Um, and I looked at it and she said, and Angela said to me, she's like, well, she actually, she had an assistant and she looks at him and she's like, Daniel, I once did an entire year of bad work. We should find it. We should look at it. And she said, just make work. That's it. That's the answer. Isn't obsessing. You weren't here to make one specific thing. Our life goals are not like, yes, we, we go along kind of a linear path, but we all notice they spike off. Right. Yeah. And we, we give ourselves more um, stress trying to acclimate to that. If I had to acclimate to all the hacks that I wear in one moment, that's probably why I am such yeah. a, <laughs> thank God for planners. Uh, yeah. well, <laughs> you know, with that, when you're talking about that, getting derailed and stuff, and that's so what, easy. you know, everyone that's watching, that's what makes purpose so important mm -hmm. because that's what kind of keeps you in this, on the same You have path. somewhere to come back to. Yeah. You that's always, it. because if you lose your sense of purpose, you know, then when you don't have that purpose and, you know, set, and that's something you have to actually, um, what's the word like active. it's something proactive you actually it's intentional that's yes. the word mm -hmm. purpose is something intentional it doesn't just go like oh i wonder what my purpose is in life mm -hmm. wonder, yeah. it doesn't come to you like that it actually has to be intentional but it's really based on your experiences and stuff like that you don't you just come, grow with, come it. Up with it exactly you have to grow with it if you, well, if that, you decide okay at the end i wanted this right. i had no clue when i started my program i thought i specifically wanted to be a guidance counselor fell in love with the clinical mental health side of it and knew that like being lucky enough to kind of be in school while also working another career that is kind of interchangeable was really valuable because I got to see that we have to be able to be malleable. Yeah. If oh, you, that's like, exactly what I was actually going to go. But your purpose was still that end result. Right. You're, you're going to come and say your goal right. can shift. You know, yeah, we're always right. so everyone that's watching, like, you know, people that uh, have gone through trauma and things like that, what their issue is, they don't understand that they're evolving. Trauma makes the you change, accelerates it. It's and very so, common. Yeah. So, you know, we're always changing, whether without trauma or with or without trauma, but trauma accelerates the change. Mm -hmm. But no matter what, you five years ago is not the same. And you five years from now, Hopefully, it will not be the same. same. It's the one that tried to be the same because before the trauma, they're like, I like that person and I want to keep that person. They hold when, on. You yeah. actually tend to stay at the age of your trauma. So, yeah. uh, oh, I, I wow. Had, oh, wow. So, that's even why a lot age. of people are really immature. Think about women yeah. that go through domestic abuse. My little brother. Especially, oh, my yeah. That's kind of like oh, my, my little God. brother. Think about he domestic abuse. When yeah. they suffer it so young, they get kind of stuck because you go through these, um, you know, there's uh, stages of life, psychosocial, all, all these different, you know, stages of life that you have to go through. Right. If you at 17 started being abused, you know, or seven, wherever at your life that trauma had, or again, vets overseas, 
wherever that traumatic event happened, you tend to get stuck in your growth. And you have to handle those things. Um, I, like I said, I did not start seeing my counselor who has been a godsend in my life until I was 30, 31. And I went thinking I was going about something totally else and realizing I had so much stuff from my youth that I needed to process. And that then once I, I always, I uh, liken it to coughing out the ash, (laughs) getting that out there, you know, like it's not just who I am. I'm not just that piece, but we have to remember that when you're stuck still in it, or if you didn't yeah. get to change the, if you didn't have that person, and that to me is why teaching that's and that's that right. crosses over yeah. because I'm there to spot it ahead of time. I, I can't ever ever imagine really leaving teaching teaching as a profession. They're so hand in hand. I don't know what that future will look like directly right now, but I just know that when these people are stuck at this age and they or they haven't processed wherever they're at. The, the situation they've gone through right now, we're still living in it, right? We're still in the middle of it. We can't process until we get through it. You know, we, yeah, we, yeah. pieces of it, you know, yeah. you can get better at it. You can, you can be more mindful. You can choose to look on the bright side. Yes. Should you look towards your strengths? I'm a very big solution focused um, person yeah. when it comes to my therapy as well. I, yes, we have to address your past. We're going to do that because we want to get to where you can now make changes to your future, right? Yeah. And yeah. and reality therapy is along that same line yeah. too. I can just a quick cut in for that. Uh, one of the things that we started learning is that, you know, it's not necessarily what you can see in the past. It's actually what you can't see in the future. Mm-hmm. And that's what really oh, yeah. messes people up. They can't see right. a different version. Mm-hmm. And they always just see like, no. You're stuck. They're stuck. And this they just me can't and that's it, and veer I, off. That's who I am. Exactly. And that's it. I'm stuck right and here. And they get hurt. Like people yeah. that, you know, and then the thing is they latch on. And this is what I do not like what's happening out there. Is because whenever you're in that state of mind, negative state of mind, you tend to love excuses and hate accountability, right? Always happens. Absolutely. Whether you're healthy or not, always happens. It's not my fault. What do you mean? Until later on, you're like, fuck, that was my fault. <laughs> so anyway, but when you're in bad, but the thing is, when we give them that excuse and we just call it depression, PTSD, anxiety, there's well, nothing you can fight with that. There's, you're not talking about the cause. You're just talking about the result. And mm-hmm. so people are using it as an excuse now to stay in the past. Like, oh, I've got PTSD. So... That's why and I many of them don't know though, you know, and that's why it's important to go to your licensed therapist. And yeah, yeah, that's that true. Because they, you may, th- and they might even be able to have the argument back and forth with you, but it doesn't mean that it's clicked but for them. Yeah, if they're intentionally forward. using it as an excuse though. Yeah. So they may not know what the cause is, but it sucks when they're just saying out there like, oh, it's depression. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, for example, they'll say, and like, then say I can not depression for 10 years. Like, yeah. I don't, I'd rather you tell me like, oh man, I've been dealing with letting go of my divorce for 10 years. Now I get what you're talking about. That's the cause is, oh, okay. It's because you can't seem to let go of the People divorce. don't always know the root cause though. So it, it's easy to say that, right, but, but it, you think so, it's this and it's this. And that's why the processing of kind of everything. You right. Know, but when you, so but when you blame the result, you will never solve it. Like, oh, no. If you're never. always going to the finish. If you just like, go, I have depression. I have yeah. depression, so. And I depression. can't fix it. I can't work with it. Because listen, exactly. someone who has depression, more likely than not, a lot of them, there, there is situational. It's called adjustment disorder. So when someone passes away, when someone um, just goes through a really, you know, a car accident, something that shifts their whole paradigm is yeah. an adjustment disorder. And it is a version of, of depression. Yeah. There is clinical depression that is lifelong and they're always going to go through bouts where they're able to handle it and not and kind of ebb and flow. But if we started a society where we were allowed to process ourselves, our day, we don't have the time. We're too go, go, go. We're not giving people the time to right. actually process who they are. And then in the small amount of time they have, how many other distractions are they handling at the same time? So mm-hmm. They might still think it's right now and this was it. And it turns out that as you kind of peel away the onion, right? We always talk about the big therapy term, you know, peel the layers of the onion away because that core issue is always still there. And it might be self-esteem. It might be addiction. It might be something that helps people, not helps them because if anything, it's, you know, it's anti that, right? right? Keeps them in this circle. And it's 
what I love about the these modalities I'm talking about, the expressive art therapies, is people aren't afraid of them, right? Think about music. Yeah, right. Think about that song that just puts you to tears. Like I hear, you know, Ave, not Ave Maria, um, Amazing Grace, especially on bagpipes. I'm a mess. There's <laughs> nothing <laughs> Uh, automatic, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know my triggers. <laughs> I know my triggers. <laughs> you know, and but I had to work out. People don't take the time to know themselves anymore. We're really top. Yeah. We're worried about outside influences. What other people's needs? We're very, uh, you know, women are are naturally nurture nurturers. Not to say all men aren't, because there's many men I know that are very nurturing. Yeah. But it's something we do to a fault without a switch that we have to turn off sometimes and remember to go back in. Where men are very, since they take care of one, you know, we're like the whole spectrum men yeah. are able to be a little more again we'll go back to linear again they can tend to work on one thing finding which way works for each of us so maybe for you um I, my husband's building me a beautiful art table right now right and he disappeared in it for hours because it was be, it becomes peaceful right as you're working and creating and building something that at the end is a tangible product you tend to feel good about it, right? You, yeah. you gave yeah. it the same as when you clean a house. That's why people with that, a lot of, you know, people use that as a coping mechanism because, you know, at the end, I couldn't control everything else, but I could control yeah. this. But I can clean my house. Right. And I can <laughs> solve things. When Creativity. people are trying to solve, you know, you have to yeah. do the things that you can control. When it's outside of your control, that's how, you know, you got to make a decision. Like that's now you, you it's said your environment now, yeah. you know, what can you control to get yourself out of that environment? So, yeah. You know, a lot, mo it's mostly internal, but when there's some kind of external thing and you know what it is, and like you said, and it's actually what I tell people, like uh, when I try to match up entrepreneurship with mental health mm -hmm. is as entrepreneurs, we're always like, how's the company doing? Why is the sales up? And why is this down and this and that? What did we do this month? How is the quarter? Mm -hmm. You know, all la, companies la, 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 la. do that. We need we more that All you know, together. We don't do a self-evaluation basically. Yeah, you know? per that personal, you know, our own personal responsibility our own personal efficacy, you know, like right. what are we, we doing to, to make that. it better? Yep. And that's to the world, you know, like one thing we're seeing right now and part of the reason why I, mean, I only came back onto Facebook today for you guys. So that's love <laughs> uh, <laughs> and stuff with, with you and stuff. Here um, I, guys. I can't, I can't stomach the lack of community anymore. You know, like mm -hmm. it's okay for us to be different and different opinions and things like that. But we're in a, in a pandemic and the only thing that can help us right now is how we come together. Right? right is how we collectively take charge to bring health back to our world yeah, both right. physically mentally emotionally yeah. and, and since we are unfortunately at the mercy of many beyond us what we can control is ourselves right and art is right. a way in that people yeah. aren't uncomfortable with music yeah. You know, the things, whether it's just uh, running, I had started running and putting on, I, I love Nine Inch Nails. I, I would go yeah. running to Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> to, oh, yeah. I already, all know, my, I already know it's all my alternative <laughs> <laughs> Nirvana. Um, you know, because that needing to get that tenseness out. I think yeah. right now, whatever we do, whether people use exercise, drawing and painting, music, talking to other people, writing, writing stories. Yeah. yeah. We have to focus on trying to bring ourselves to a calm and healthy place so that yeah. we can handle the reality of what's going right. on. Which is out of people that are watching. So a lot of times when I, when we talk about that, so when, when you do it proactively, it's good to, because it kind of battles the, uh, what do you call it? The stress response. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to wait. Right. But ultimately it's actually still a, uh, a reactive move. So yeah. you have to do this proactive, like mm -hmm. you're doing this to proactively go, you know what, I want to have a better state of mind. Mm -hmm. Like with the things that's going on today, and you'll realize this, you know, how you got sick of Facebook and this and that and what people, you'll realize because everyone is just talking about the result. Mm -hmm. No one is discussing any cause. No one. Everyone's just talking about result. And that's what happens to, to people in their own mind. Why they're in such, you know, a crazy place is because... All they keep talking about is the result. Oh, this is what happened. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. And then depression. Yeah, depression led there. But it's like, let's start talking about the solution because you have to remedy the cause, not the result. I'm very big. Solution focused to me is huge. Right. I exactly. know for myself when I decided to say, you know what, that problem where, where it may stem from here, I am dealing my with my reaction to it. And I did. I had I had a year where I was not my favorite person. 
Yeah. And it was the first year I was with my husband who who luckily dealt with that. It's just because I had a lot of trauma that I needed to process. And unfortunately, I then when I've I had, moved a, year. I was well, I've had a few months of that, not a year right? ahead of that. I did. You even know it and you can't uh -huh. get out of it. And yeah. it's because you, that rock bottom, rock bottom exists for a reason, right? They didn't yeah. say endless pit. The pit doesn't continue. Yeah. There is a bottom. But like people, if you don't have to. You don't have problem. to, but you don't just know it. Exactly. Out there because yeah. a lot of people think like, oh, you know, because I hate raw one. Kind of like when people say like, you know, I just had enough. Because, it, <laughs> you know, we've learned enough is not an amount. It's a decision. It's a decision. Because it was enough I five like years that. ago. That I like a lot. Like, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? I've because people always years. say that, you know, like, oh, I've had enough. It, with that relationship, it took you 10 years, huh? Mm -hmm. It was enough like 10 years ago when you complained to me about the same exact thing, you know? But it's all about people making the choice to right. do the act. I yeah, got right. myself into it's therapy. Always. I started it and it yep. wasn't a day. That's the other thing is people think, oh, I'm going to go once and I'm feel better. Right. I'm going to let you know ahead of time. That's not how it works. First, nope. you have to build your therapeutic alliance with your counselor, right? right? Once that, as that builds, that's how you're giving your history. They're learning about you. They're learning about what it is that is, has brought you to where you are right now. You know, right. we're going to ask what brings you here? Why Why do you feel you're here? And right. we're going to help guide you in that direction. I know that it was when I chose to not hear the voices, both in my own head and those who had opinions. You know, someone once said, one of these people who obviously I'm going to leave out their name, but said to me at one point, like, I don't think you want to be a teacher. Oh. And I was, I got a job like, like three days later. I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> you are really Now listen. Like, oh really? The first year teaching is, is the first three years are, are terrifying. You know, like you, you're amassing all of your knowledge, right? You're learning this new language at the same time as you're trying to grow as your own human. You've got 30 humans staring at you like ready, especially in high school. You get in there. First thing they're going to do is make fun. Right. Put the first punch out there. <laughs> Take it out yourself first. It's easier. Um, but it's that growth, that, that solution focus, that, that need to help people get past those moments, find their, their inner strength to become solution focused. And they can't always see it if they can't see past their face. We know yeah. that the nose, you know, cut off your nose to spite your face. Yeah. So we also have to be kind because those of us that have taken that time, I know I'm probably annoying with how I say it now. Like to someone says, they're on, oh, go to a counselor, go to a counselor, go to a counselor. Hey, you. Yeah. Go to a counselor, you know, like, what? because it's it really valuable to me. And right. unfortunately, there are people that have very bad experiences. So again, right. and I'm going to repeat it over and over again, if that wasn't your fit, that's okay. Yeah. There's different I, types yeah. of counselors. There's different types right. of counselors. Right, right. Yeah, it really depends. Just like different coaches, right? Yes. You know, I, I do wish that, you know, fit with your style nice insurance different. would catch up to that theory, though, because people are kept from using all the modalities based on that. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a hard thing. And, but... Luckily, and we remember from where we were kids to now, yeah. people didn't go to counselors. You just sucked it up, right? So right. we're kind of in this beautiful time where it has been normalized. It is, and thank God, you know, it's through that normalization that we've now seen such growth in, you know, be welcoming our LGBTQIA plus community into the world yeah. and all the different cultures that we're around. We need to recognize our universality as human beings first. And what we do usually get to see that through is art and music. So it's, it's an entrance way, our students, you know, helping them younger, helping. I can't wait to see what the generations are like forward from now that have been able to talk, especially our men that are much more apt to use mental health, um, yeah. you know, avenues now and still grow in comparison. Yeah. Like you mentioned before, you know, before you even start looking for a therapist and all this stuff, I got to tell people, man, because a lot of people do go to therapists, right. But without holding themselves accountable of actually making the decision to mm -hmm. fix them. Yeah. They're just going. Like and because they're talk, going. The, it's funny. The, and it's like they're just going to talk to get it done. And they're like, well, I went exactly. to therapy and that didn't work. I, I or, know, I know people who go to therapy. And they're and not learning. They go to therapy all the time, once a week, twice a week, couple mm -hmm. therapy, alone therapy, whatever. They go to therapy all the time and nothing's changed. They don't have the intention and to. I've seen it from the outside looking in on several different people. And mm -hmm. it's like I, I've watched this. And we call it doing the work. Doing the work. We're just yeah. going, I think, just to go. Yeah, yeah. they knew that. You said, well, went, well, I went and it didn't fix anything. So yeah. it's right. like, well, I've been going and it's not helping. <laughs> right. So it's not my fault. It's the therapist's fault. Exactly. Or whatever, but it's I can't see it. My therapist yeah. will be like, okay, so here's a great example of that. And I'm still mad at him if he's watching. Yeah. <laughs>
So when I said I was uncomfortable and I and I was feeling bad because like many of us, when we first went home, we were all drinking more and we were more sedentary because we didn't know what we can do. Oh, yeah. And and I said I wanted to start running and, and getting myself going. And he said, all right, well, you can't have your glass of wine unless you run first. Oh, go, tricky, go, go, tricky, go, 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 go. <laughs> tricky, tricky. And, you know, and what it was, was making a tangible acceptance, you know, like, okay, I'm going to take care, better care of myself so I can have have this here you know we have to have that person sometimes to say like okay like we have to forgive ourselves in these places we can work on these places they we the therapy is meant to help ground you and help you kind of find your way right so whatever you it is. right and that's actually what we emphasize you know, like you know we have our fuke clothing so just people that don't know so our biggest thing with Fuki clothing is really letting people know that everyone is exposed to motivational stuff, inspirational stories, or even the content that we're providing now. Like everyone sees this every day. You can go on YouTube and Google it and you'll find something just like that. But they're all meaningless unless you actually make a decision about something. Mm -hmm. And you have to actively care. Yeah. Right. And you know, the reason, you know, fuck it resembles fuck it. And we want to pe persuade people to say fuck it more because the only time you actually say that is when you actually make yeah. a decision or when you mm -hmm. commit to it, the yeah. only reason you say it is because you're actually um, confirming to yourself. You never say fuck it for someone, right? Mm -hmm. You're confirming to yourself that you're actually going to follow through and mm -hmm. commit to the decision. You just, just go for it. Never back right. out. Yeah. And so that is very, very like it, it, it's the biggest difference because there's I'm starting to kind of debate the whole idea of knowledge is power because it's absolutely useless if you don't use it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have too much, and you could have too much of it just because you go in search yeah. of power if you, of knowledge if you don't yeah. use it for the power. greater good. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the decision is the power because once you make the decision, now you're using all your knowledge and everything because mm -hmm. knowledge sitting there is completely useless. It's kind of like when people are like, oh, education should be free. It is fucking free. Like there is so much information. You can find out it's, anything. It's right. called Google. Mm -hmm. It's just that back in the day, there was no access to this type of information. So people are like, education should be free. There are more kids learning on their own, whether it's you know programming or even art, YouTube. Oh, YouTube, and everything like that. We, we have it at our fingers. And even if we can't find the true end goal through whatever searching we do here, if yeah. it can lead us in a direction, you know, we're already in a more valuable place. Right. By, you know, like, cause think about, and I'm going to go back to art again, cause that's what I'm about. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, emotional Google. <laughs> so not call it. It's emotional Google in the art of creating as you keep going. And yes, you do you want to have a good end product. Of course you do. But as your mind relaxes and you start to search other places, you find other questions that you have. Cause you're, you're not, you're very, you know, you're creating in that moment. You're letting yeah. your mind go to relax. You might find solutions. You might find more questions. You might find more strength. Um, and it's if we actually tapped into the power of our own, you know, empathy, sympathy, emotional status, our, our creativity, our kindness, our thoughtfulness, all those things, it's the same as going for more knowledge, right? We're yeah. finding more ways to connect with ourselves, the present, and how that's a way to be a better global citizen. That's our end goal, right? We want to leave a good mark on the planet, you know, on our families, definitely, even if we don't want to go so global. Um, but until we are willing to have those hard conversations with ourselves and yeah. grow, and yeah. then what better to me, that end result is what we pass out on to our other yeah. generations, whether so it's teachers, thing. parents, friends. Yeah. So we have like two minutes left, but I really want to leave it where people can actually make a decision to do something with art, right? Because this mm -hmm. is what you do. What's something that you can kind of guide people how they can kind of start with creative expression? Oh. Like, what do you suggest? Just so coloring we can books, man, adult coloring books are the best. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like an easy way for someone that like isn't willing to really delve in. That's yeah, just, they're unsure. They're not sure what to do. Like, what does she but mean? Online, like you said, YouTube. We use it all the time. There are those. You know how I teach those paint and sip classes, right? Where step by step, you you show someone how to paint. There's yeah. them for everything, for drawing, stuff like that. So if you want to learn something very specific in that way, right? Yeah. But otherwise, go to the dollar store, Five Below, Michaels. They have all these kits, art kits, things okay. to learn how to knit, things to learn how to bead, things to learn how to make jewelry. Yeah. Whatever you're interested in. Uh, Pinterest is a great thing. Also, baking. 
uh, architectural design, uh, gardening, landscape architecture. You can yeah. do all these things in your own home. People are doing it all the time. This is what's funny to me when people discredit artists. Literally everything in your life, the clothing you're wearing, the seat you're sitting in, the desk that you're sitting at, the computer you're working on yeah. have been designed at one point by an artist, right? Yeah. So whatever you want to create is is fine. You're an artist for yeah. that. You know? right. Go back to your music. Go shave off one side of your hair. Um, right. dye your hair, do your makeup. My, my girl, Ashley, who's, who I, I teach with and is a phenomenal artist, will do these amazing TikTok videos with her makeup that like in a, in a heartbeat I could never do. Mm -hmm. Just create whatever just feels create. good to you. Yeah. Just create. Yeah. Just create. And, and, okay. and you know, like, just Even if it's write, 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 it, write a story. Either write. That's something. actually why journaling is so good. Yeah. Cooking, like is there, everything that we do can be considered artisan these days, right? It's, it's cool to be artisan nowadays, making beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 make a beer. Like I said, make beer, do something. Beer. Right. Whatever yeah. your path, like that's usually the easiest way into me. And, and I actually, I do this with my students, right? And I know you have to, to close up, but so when I first get them in class, uh, their first project is to create a portfolio where I get to learn about them. Yeah. And at first they're all sitting there like, I don't know what to draw. And I'm like, for one, everybody give me a random word and I'll do a drawing with whatever. And it could be like Tyrannosaurus, baby, fireball, magnifying glass yeah and, you know so i'll go up to them and i'm like all right what are you about man what's your thing is it music is it sports is it food is it fashion someone always has something they're passionate about something take it, yeah. with it. Take it right. whatever you can do with yeah. it right Just be creative yeah yeah perfect awesome so everyone so again you have to make that decision and you know whatever she said, whatever you learned from this episode, you just really have to really think about it and really just intentionally put something on there. Like actually tell yourself to commit, and that's why hence you know the whole fuck it mindset, right? You have to commit to it, or else everything that we do or everything that you mm -hmm. say, they're all useless. Right. I can inspire you all day; it's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Tina. It was uh, very thank you for having me. You know, you guys so much. I it was thank great. You. It was so good. <laughs> But great to see you. Thank you Aww. again. And everyone watching, thank you for uh, joining us. Until thank you for joining next us. time. Until next time. You. We'll see you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. <laughs>